right, we're back on the mainland now. The uh, Grain Tower is just behind us, and Joe from Beyond the Point TV has turned up as well. Hi. So we've got, we've got the duo, and yeah. Chris here as well now. So the four amigos, we're going to go and check out the uh, the dummy battery here now. I don't think there's too much to see. Um, but it's something I've wanted to check out for a while anyway, and then back that way towards where um, the cars are at the car park is the the landfall tunnel so that's gonna be that's gonna be exciting stuff. As you can see just over in the distance there is Grain Tower and we've arrived here at the dummy battery which is on the mainland. Dummy battery originally known as grain battery is a disused fortified gun battery located about one kilometre south of the village of Grain at the confluence of the rivers Thames and Medway. It was completed in 1865 and it supported two nearby coast artillery batteries at Grain Fort and Grain Wing Battery a short distance to the north. The battery's arc of fire overlapped with Grain Tower just offshore and with Garrison Point Fort on the Isle of Sheppey across the other side of the Medway. It consisted of an earthwork with a concrete core supporting several gun emplacements with magazines below. It appears to have gone out of service as a battery by the time of the First World War, though it briefly took on a role in anti-aircraft defence. It was subsequently abandoned and was severely damaged by demolitions and the removal of its earthworks, leaving only the substantial remains of its concrete core standing today. The battery was constructed shortly before Grain Fault, built in 1861-1868, to 1868, and entered active service. Both fortifications were built following the recommendations of the Royal Commission on the Defence of the United Kingdom, which was established by Lord Palmerston in 1859 in response to a perceived threat from France. The site chosen for the battery was about one kilometre south of Grain Fault, it was linked to the fort by a military road constructed on a causeway across marshland. The battery's purpose was to cooperate with the fort by supplementing its arc of fire, which crossed with that of Garrison Point Fort on the other side of the river. The battery originally took the form of a J-shaped earthwork in which a concrete core accommodated an unknown number of embrasures for the guns and a magazine under a rectangular mound at the rear but underwent substantial changes following its construction. The battery was initially armed with four or five heavy rifled muzzle loaders for use against large warships. These were replaced in 1895 by more powerful six inch rifled breech loaders. In 1905 it was renamed from Grain Battery to Dummy Battery and underwent substantial alterations to its fabric to accommodate a new set of guns. Two 4.7 inch quick firing guns were installed on the roof of the fort to counter smaller and faster adversaries such as torpedo boats and destroyers. They were mounted in a pair of concrete emplacements of a typical low profile design with ready use ammunition recesses adjacent to each gun. The emplacements were linked by a covered way protected by a high parapet wall. A new magazine was also built within the battery's core with subsequent storage rooms for shells and cartridges and a fire control position was added. These alterations resulted in major changes to the form of the terraplane which obliterated many of its original features. A troop shelter also existed behind the main trace of the earthworks. The battery's coastal defence role ended some time before the First World War and its guns were removed. It continued in use as an anti-aircraft defence site during the war with the installation of two 3-inch anti-aircraft guns intended to protect Grain Air Station nearby. It appears to have been abandoned subsequently. Between 1953 and 1955 the derelict battery was severely damaged by demolitions and excavations for materials which removed the surface buildings and the original magazine. 
The current remains of the battery consist primarily of its heavily damaged concrete core from the 1860s, which is now fronted by a lake created during the 1950s excavations. The 1905 gun emplacements are still partly intact, though mutilated. A rectangular concrete structure to the right of the emplacements once housed the fire control director and a planning room. Another, more fragmentary concrete enclosure is located further to the right. Nothing is left of the original 1860s magazines or the support buildings, though their outlines can be seen on the ground. Just heading up these steps now up onto the next level and you can sort of see where like the walkways form the way and it would have joined the steps there up to that gun emplacement there it's another ammunition locker there so there's this walkway going along to the other the other gun emplacement steps are in really good condition Yeah, so there's like a walkway that's collapsed here because there's an ammunition locker there and then one down there as well and sort of two flights of staircases, one going up there where Joe is and then one going up here and it would have joined there to the other gun pit at the top and then I suppose in the middle would have been the, the rooms below us that we just looked at. don't think there's any other rooms in the fort to explore. Um, Surprisingly good Nick, this, this side's quite overgrown but that side's pretty clear. So this would have been the main walkway where the soldiers would have gone back and forth getting ammunition, manning the guns and stuff. Of course all this stuff was never actually used but it was here as a deterrent, you know, so in some ways it did serve its purpose.